Hello there. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? All right. You know, it's Thursday. We're getting closer to the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Your audio is a little crackly. I don't know how well you can hear me. I don't know if it's both directions. I have been having issues. Let me try something. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. Does that make it any better, I wonder? Well, it's still a little crackly. All right. I literally have a new microphone in my tab browser. <laughs> I need to <laughs> complete purchase. Yes, good idea. I switched to a different mic and that in the past has worked better. Actually, that's a little bit better. Okay. Hey Josh, we were just debugging hey there. microphone issues. Yep. <laughs> Amy said she's having Zoom issues. Hello everyone. Hey Paris. Hey. Paris. Yeah, I don't I don't know about y'all, but um, Google Meet has completely stopped working for me this week. Well, that's not ideal. How has it stopped working? doesn't recognize my devices on, on alternate calls. Um, hmm. so sometimes it doesn't recognize the camera. Sometimes it doesn't recognize the mic. Um, I had a recent interesting yeah. call where all audio was lagged by 30 seconds. That's helpful. Yeah. So this is, huh. this is yeah. I mean, the, um, Josh. I was gonna say I, 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 I've not experienced that before, so I don't even know where to how to start troubleshooting yeah. that for you. I yeah. don't know. The, That's um, weird. I I've noticed the various platforms seem to cyclically have problems. Uh, Computers, how do they work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Demons here. They Hi. don't. Well, there's the little elf. Who lives behind the keyboard? I thought that was you. <laughs> uh, oh wow, Stephen, you fixed the patch releases already? I was gonna say you brought you fixed everything. Great. I'm here all week. Um, we're we're almost through it. Um, Anago is weird. It's such a weird tool to use for release engineering. It's, 5,000 lines of bash or something, so. Well, we're glad you were able to join. Yay. Happy to be here. Haven't seen your faces in a bit. And sadly, we will not be able to give each other hugs next week. Oh, I was like, <laughs> next week. But never mind, never mind, I already know. <laughs> yeah, there's this big event happening. I don't know if you know about it, yeah. That's what I was like, wait, no, I, I like literally just came rolled off my tongue and that's when I was like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I like the at sign behind you. Um, but I can you space the artwork out a little bit? It's kind of yeah, weird no, right was, next to each other. That was uh my lazy moving tactics of oh, there's still nails in the wall and I have to get these things off the floor. So smart. That that's was, pretty smart. Yeah. That, those will not be there permanently. <laughs> that was yeah. Uh, you say oh, that I'm, now, but yeah. how? Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I will. Two I, years later. Yeah, I was gonna say I will <laughs> say artwork in my garage after we've moved two years that still hasn't been hung up. Yeah. I yeah. Know. Right, right on the other side of my desk are something like forty artworks awaiting framing, and oh, wow. 
Like I have this eight foot trestle table set up with framing materials that have been sitting there for two years now. Same. We have that downstairs as well. Like <laughs> new business idea. Somebody just comes in your home, does it all for you, frames it, hangs it up, and then they leave like little magical fairies in the night. I I'd pay for that. I, I say, want the cover. I say they don't do it in the middle of the night, but that exists. It's just very expensive. Oh, really? Yeah. I want I want the the um the person who will attend your Zoom calls for you. Like yes. That is a service I would pay <laughs> many dollars for. I honestly like I've been in th I've been thinking about uh, that as well. Like, hey, like, <laughs> why don't we break up the Kubernetes meetings and y'all go to this one and then like we all collaborate on what just happened, kind of thing. Yeah. That's really it. <laughs> Yeah, Carolyn's got a good point. They have to actually do your action items too, because otherwise, like the sitting in the meeting is actually the easiest part. <laughs> yeah. Josh, and you can get signed minute. up for all kinds of crazy stuff if they don't actually yeah. see your face. <laughs> yeah. You know, because if they're I, representing you, I'd be like, yeah, Paris will do that. Yeah, yeah Paris will sure. do that. No, no, no Heck, I ended up president of a club once because I didn't attend the right meeting. Like, wait, did you not know about the club at all? <laughs> like, what, how did No, no, no I knew about the club. I was a member. I was a member. <laughs> okay. And I missed the meeting while they were electing a new president. Oh. And oh, wow. Then, <laughs> and then one of my friends messaged me and said, congratulations. And I'm like, congratulations for what? <laughs> It's like, usually that means you don't get it. Like, you yeah. get extra work, but you never get a free title, right? <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Josh, you're running the show today, by the okay. way. Okay, well, then let's get started. Um, do we just have the usual suspects here, or do we have new people? No, looks like the usual suspects. Howdy, everybody. Um, the um, um, uh, put your name on there if it's not already. Um, the um, so um, okay. Um, let's see. I uh, uh, governance WG updates. Um, the number one next steps with badges. Um, I guess I can speak to this. I have not had a chance to sync up with DIMS. Um, really, the next step with the badges is that somebody needs to look at the due diligence documents, look at the um, um, look at the annual review documents, um, uh, can can somebody actually take notes while I'm talking? I'm I'm a good secretary, but I'm unable to talk to. and type at the same time. The um, so um, sync with the annual review documents, sync with the due diligence documents, and that sort of thing, and come up with a sort of coherent set of badges based on the data that we're already collecting um, as our initial proposal. Um, the um, so um, the that's kind of the big next step. The sort of smaller next step is figuring out what our sort of feedback loop is going to be to validate the badges. Um, the, um, but I kind of want to hold off on that second part until we determine what badges we're going to be doing initially, because I think, I think the what is going to affect the how. The, um, uh, the other thing is that we have two documents that everybody's approved of, and we just need to get those merged into PRs. Um, one is um, the document on um, growing leadership, on, on um, electing, selecting, assigning leadership. Um, and the other one is a document on what is governance. Um, these are advisory documents. Um, so they just yeah, need I should to be have I should have time tomorrow to PR and the leadership selection one. Cool. You have um, a link to those that we can review. Uh, yeah, let's paste yeah, in. Yeah, I've, I've got the I've got the leadership selection one open. I'll drop that one in now. All 
my real question is, I've got like four versions of what is I've governance. I dropped it in the notes. Yeah, so if you have comments on the leadership selection one, drop those in today and I can have a look at those before I PR it in my morning tomorrow. Yep. And these are all things on the content list. I'm going to be working next on um, sort of defining common paperwork for projects. Um, the um, And uh, this is material I already have. It will link into the template repository. Um, I you know, because in two ways, one is both links to the existing templates that we have. And then second, um, determining whether or not we need to add some additional templates. Because if we say something is, hey, this is paperwork most projects need, then we ought to have a template for it. Oh, I wonder if um, under governance, we should talk about the issue that George raised with the voting tools. Oh, yeah, that is that is important. Thank you for remembering that. Oh, yeah. Um, the um, so this actually came out of the election committee for Kubernetes, where we're doing all of this munging of voter lists and getting people's email addresses out of get, etc. And saying, this is really stupid, a computer ought to be doing this. Um, the um, uh, and um, um, the suggestion, um, which I don't remember if this is George's suggestion or Bob's suggestion was, you know, we should just really get the CNCF to hire an intern to create an online version of CIVs that um, uses external OAuth. Um, and in the case of projects like Kubernetes, we would tie it in with GitHub, but other projects could tie it in with different OAuth sources if they had a reason to. Um, and, and the spec is not complicated. This is honestly something that we could write up with, um, uh, you know, a page long spec plus the CIV source. Um, and, um, and, you know, turn loose some intern on it to work on it for four months. Um, so so it looks like OpaVote was suggested both by Amy and somewhere in that issue. Um, I have not poked at it yet, but. Just to say, I, I found out about this um, approximately like two weeks ago, and I'm very excited about like being able to actually use like a proper system, because one of the great things about OpaVote is that it will show you how many people have actually voted. What a yeah. concept. <laughs> it, this tells you how many people voted. Yes, you can see like as the votes come in, it won't tell you, it won't show you what's winning, but it'll it'll show you like exactly how many of the ballots that are out and how many people have voted, which is very very nice. And I did not realize that I wanted that feature until I did not have it. Is it? Hmm. Is it I open mean, source? I'm kind of down with talking to the people that make sieves and saying how can we help you make this better. Oh, Civs is not maintained anymore, as far as I know. The the SPI folks patch it periodically when there's some need to do so, but I don't think there's any active development on it. It just exists. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wondering if someone's sentient. Open source it then, right? What Civs is open source. It is. Yes. Well, then, like, like let's just make that better then. Shit. The um. I'm actually but, wondering about. But hang on, is is OpaVote like free for open source projects or something? Yeah, <laughs> and then the other and the other questions are things like, like one of the critical features for us is, we need people to be able to log in via their GitHub login. And if OpaVote doesn't have that feature, it doesn't solve our problem. Definitely don't think they have that feature. I I remember uh, looking at them for that. Um, I mean, it's been a while though, and they could have turned that over, but as of last year, they did not have that feature. 
Yeah, it seems like something a lot of projects would would want. And like you said, it makes it makes absolute sense to have it tied into GitHub. With without it, it's just it just becomes a nightmare. Yeah. And OpaVote is not open source, so we would have no ability to add that feature ourselves. I mean, for that matter, I have some nervousness about any non-open source solution for our voting. Um, just because, you know, if there was if there was a bug in how it worked, we just wouldn't know. No clue, yeah. And And given that I'm currently going through bugs in how we determine the list of um, uh, Kubernetes voters, I kind of feel like that's also a in an inalienable feature. Oh, the Ben the Elder bug, everyone's favorite bug. Is... Well, it's not actually. We have a new one, Lily C. Yeah, I mean, she's... I mean, of yeah. that class, yeah, of that class, yes, ben, yeah. Ben is the, pretty um... much the always the first one to bump into that bug yeah. because of capitalization. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, like, I you know. I had no particular reason to know that the capitalization of people's handles in Kubernetes slash org was different from the capitalization in dev stats. Um, mm. and, you know, it just didn't occur to me as a problem. And we had this discussion too, because I, like I said, I'm doing this to a Postgres database. I can't figure out a way to have another member of the election commission audit what I'm doing to double check it. And we couldn't figure one out. And then of course that paid dividends. And it's like, it's like, why aren't these tools doing like yeah. display name and then also like a normalized ID, right? Of some okay. sort, right? But anyway, getting back to the proposal, um, I don't think OpaVote, unfortunately, I don't think OpaVote has the features we need. Um, sure. The, um, I mean, we can obviously talk to them, um, but... I'm not seeing anything about supporting external authentication. Um, the, um, and if they don't have it, I still think it makes sense to talk to CNCF about doing this as a project and then having it, CNCF or LF, as a, as a Linux foundation feature for their projects. Because if there's if there's anything that makes sense for the Linux Foundation to supply as a service, it is voting. And I also wonder, um, like when we were building the steering committee elections years ago, I also wonder if in your governance guidance that you give to projects that this is actually something that they need to watch out for as they build for these roles. Because in the beginning for us, it was even more ambiguous. Um, and like when you're, when we're building for like roles and different levels of maintainer or whatever it is that, you know, voting members, you're going to need to do things like collect their emails or have voting mechanisms in place where you, you can contact them and get them. Um, and like the ability, so I guess I'm what, I, what I'm getting at is the ability to contact these said people in the roles that you want them in is so difficult, I think, in open source um, in general. Um, but here it was just so key and apparent. And Josh, as you're doing it now, you're like, this sucks. And it's like, yeah, I feel like it's just more apparent when we when we do activities like this, that we really don't have good contact methods for folks. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the case of Kubernetes, the reason why we want to have authentication via GitHub is that then the contact method issue becomes kind of a non-issue. Um, right, exactly. The, um, so, because I mean, our big problem there is we determine who can vote by their GitHub handle but then we need to contact them via email. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a project that was doing everything via email, um, like for example, this was never a problem in Postgres because Postgres does everything by email and has a very complex and self-maintained custom email infrastructure to support this. Um, that is the problem though, is that, that projects are inventing their original one-off tools. Yeah. Um, the, um, anyway, um, the, um, yeah, 
So I think I think we should bring this a proposal to CNCF, even though I'm going to also contact OpaVote at the same time because I just realized I know the person who runs OpaVote from my um, open source uh, ballot box days. So um, he and I actually apparently went to Sacramento together. So um, the um, so we I will go ahead and ping that. him and see whether or not external auth is even a likely possibility. Um, I mean, that said, I still think something open source created by, you know, someone working for the CNCF would still be a better solution. Um, among other things, OPA vote costs per election and per voter. And across all of the CNCF projects that would add up to a pretty substantial amount of money pretty quickly. You know, and it would put often put projects in a situation where they ask CNCF to, where they have they have to ask CNCF in order to do an election, and then CNCF might sometimes say no for budget reasons. I would say that uh, speaking about the intern, so you can always uh, you can always get an intern working with uh, we are the community bridge. Yeah, and this would be a great community bridge project. Of course, so. Welcome and, to, to start working on, so you're welcome to yeah. put your proposal late August, so post KubeCon will launch another round. Okay. And that, that's it. So you, you can even drive that as Kubernetes project because it's primarily for the Kubernetes project needs. And um, if you want, you, you can scale that later. Uh, yeah. the, esti the estimated time for, uh, for the intern to work on, on the regular project is around three months. So hopefully that, that should be fine. If not, so yeah. we can figure something, something else. But yeah. community bridge probably is the easiest way to, to handle that yeah. fiscally and uh, in the way of like finding someone to, to handle yeah. this task. Yeah, that seems fine. But the, the other part of this that I want to push through this SIG is the idea that when we have something CNCF would officially adopt it as a thing that's available for CNCF projects if they want to use it. Um, not uh, just as a project for Kubernetes. Yeah, um, we, we can discuss it later, but uh, again, like answering directly, answering your question on yeah. the hiring an interim and yeah. developing something. So yeah. community okay. bridge is the easiest way to do it. Okay, well, if you can help me through the community bridge paperwork mm -hmm. for creating an internship opportunity, um, I and I'll ping would anybody else here be interested in being um, a mentor for this? I mean, I think I have to be on it because I think I'm probably the only one in our SIG who can still read Perl. Um. <laughs> but, uh, Depends, my Perl or someone else's Perl? <laughs> it's someone else's Perl. And I, I think Sibs was originally written for Perl 5.1, so it's a little gnarly. I'm clutching my pearls about that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm here all week. <laughs> you said you weren't even going to be here. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> I can go. <laughs> yep. Uh, so we can discuss it later. Post KubeCon, we, we're going to launch another next round of Community Bridge. So mm -hmm. we, we may definitely have something there. So let's, let's, just, let's just chat after that, after the next week. And um, I'm happy to help you also with all the uh, onboarding, uh, onboarding instructions and how to get started as a mentor and do, do everything that is needed there. That's it. Sure. Should we roll a service desk issue, or is it sufficient to just have that GitHub issue open? Uh, it's sufficient to have a GitHub issue. Okay, cool. If you want something more than just a community bridge in terms of service desk, I uh, think it will be required. But if you find with just uh, going the community bridge line, so uh, we have the mentoring repo under the CNCF organization where we track all the the proposals. So. Um, I'll open. I'll open the Q3, Q4 round uh, 
soon uh, and you'll be able to submit your formal proposal. So it's done similarly to that way how people are proposing uh, Google Stream Code proposals, for example. So everything is public, you, you, you can just propose, you, you can just put a pull request there uh, with your ideas and that's it. I'll, I'll try to find some links now and share here in the chat, not to, not to take an hour time. Okay, so just adding an action item for me. Okay, so given that, let us move on to contributor growth. Um, so Carolyn, Dawn. So I missed last meeting, so hopefully someone who was there can speak to it. I don't actually go to the contributor growth meetings. I just picked up the project health thing because that's what I do was there, um, but Don, I want you to talk about your project health thing because you've been putting in a ton of work there. So you start first. Yeah, I'm happy to. So the links in the, um, links in the doc. Uh, yeah, basically I went through and I picked some measurements that, so the idea behind this doc, let's just start at the beginning, was to get people away from thinking that stars and forks me measure project health because they don't, they're, Vanity popularity metrics, they're interesting, but not, um, not from a health perspective. So the whole purpose of the stock was trying to get people thinking about what actually matters when it comes to project health and why it matters. So certainly in one doc, we're not going to have a comprehensive all of the things you can measure. So what I tried to focus on were the things that I thought was the most important with an eye towards helping people understand why it might be important to measure for their particular project. And then I added a big disclaimer kind of at, towards, towards the top here um, to address a lot of the comments in the, uh, you know, throughout the, the doc about how, you know, they're not one size fits all, they're, um, the dashboards aren't gonna be right, they're gonna be issues with the data. So I tried to address that there and I also um, included it at the very bottom as well. Um, so I don't know how much people wanna talk about this, but I would encourage you to, have a look if you wanted to provide some feedback today. I will probably try to PR this tomorrow, but it's basically broken down into a bunch of types of metrics with ideas and examples for how you might want to measure it, along with some best practices at the bottom. That's all I had. I'm down for you to PR this in and do um, and have us do comments and do like a mailing list um, call for comments if you want to do that. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. But like anything, okay. I, I sort of think it's better to get the doc out so that people can use it and then we can we can iterate on it and continue to improve it over time. Yeah. Josh, you're on mute. I see your lips moving. Um, from my perspective, there's enough there that we could go ahead and, and PR it. Okay. We'll do. Yeah, I'll try to get to that tomorrow. Um, and then the meeting on Tuesday was uh, a small, a small meeting. Um, Toby uh, came, it was a new contributor, added a, a, a ton of value, uh, actually added some issues about um, the idea of recognizing contributors. So for instance, um, how some projects do um, contributor recognition at release, like either in the change log or um, on some kind of website or something along those lines, um, just pretty much like guidance around how to uh, and ways, best practices, ideas, et cetera, for um, recognizing contributors. Um, so that's an issue if anybody is interested in picking up that Toby set in um, GitHub, or if you just have something to add as far as stuff that you think 
works or stuff that you've seen uh, added to that issue as well. Um, Container D, the project came by. Um, they are looking for some guidance and they're willing to schedule a dedicated project meeting for us. Uh, they would like to talk about how to set up uh, roles, for instance, uh, security advisors, uh, reviewers, uh, different types of roles, uh, and they're looking for guidance there. Um, I am coordinating with Derek McGowan, one of their maintainers. Uh, we haven't gotten very far yet, um, but when we have uh, dates, I'll, we'll do like a doodle and I'll send them to the governance group as well as the contributor strategy group to see um, what makes sense on a kind of a course of action on how we can best help the Container D crew. Um, they're also potentially looking at uh, looking at these as on ramps into the project as well. So, you know, obviously looking at Kubernetes with the release team and some of the other team kind of things that we have that create entries into contributions for Container D. So uh, it was very cool to have a project there though. I was like, Hey, Derek, I work with you. What are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> so it's cool. Uh, I feel like the outreach that we're doing is is slowly but steady working. Um, and that's also just a side note to all of y'all to, um, to continue with the outreach as well. But that was pretty much it. Um, we also just did just a general, uh, wow, we still have a lot more work to do, stand up. Um, but that was pretty much it. Okay. So we've got, that sounds good. At some point, do we need to worry about having some kind of clearinghouse thing for requests? I mean, we get a certain number of requests from projects. We've been dealing with them ad hoc. I was just going to set an is issue. Ad hoc, is ad hoc file still working? Issue. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would say yeah, file one issue. issue. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. And we probably want a template for that. So yeah, I owe a issue and I owe after that um, a doodle. Because I, after, I said, oh, you know, we can come to one of your community meetings or whatever. And they were like, no, 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 let's, let's set up something for us to dig deep. So maintainers and us. So should they just come to one of our meetings then? Well, I mean, I think that's, you know, they said that's, that as well. So yeah. yeah. Because we'll I mean, yeah, we'll coordinate that. Like I said, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, yeah, because I think our intent was was like the alternating meetings. We'd have a, a kind of drop by slot. Yep. Okay. Um, the um. I feel like if the drop by slot is going to be a real thing, we need to somehow advertise it differently. I thought we advertised according to the outreach that the whole dang thing is dropped. Yeah. Just because we were trying to get people to just drop in, period. <laughs> yeah, I think we got to hit the the webs and the Twitters and all the things uh, heavier. I think we've got like a, you know, the, the core group, but um getting more maintainers from different projects would be cool. Okay. I think sometimes it feels weird to drop into someone else's meeting um, and not be on the agenda and just kind of like agenda bomb them. And yeah. Be like, hey, we're going to talk about my rando thing. So I think sometimes maybe if we say like it's totally okay, like we have time carved out in our agenda for you to come and talk about whatever that may help. Um, it always does the other option is to explicitly call them office hours because yeah. I, think, 
it's it's hard when people like you said i always i always feel sort of guilty like dropping in on somebody else's project meeting with my own agenda to ask a bunch of questions exactly. Whereas that's more appropriate for an office hours if we did that like once a month or something and i mean if we want something of a structure like office hours is good but also like drop into like actually drop yourself onto the agenda right so like shoot a note to the list say like hey is it cool that we drop by and foo date um, and then put up actually agenda items that you want to discuss, right? That way there's some structure around it before we get started. I've also just been going to them, which I know isn't sustainable. I know I'm already getting eye rolls, but um, yeah, I've been going to some community meetings and stuff like that. Just to try to... Mm -hmm throw a break. Yeah. I, I think that's a I think that's a likely to be a lot more successful. Like the the requests for help that I've gotten, I've generally gotten because I'm a member of the project ecosystem already. Um either because of Red Hat or because, you know, it's in technology area I'm involved in. Um so um like even if we were gonna do say an official once a month office hours, I think we would want to go to ping people in individual projects and, and remind them of it. Yeah, I feel like some projects are so under the water right now, they're not hearing what we're putting out. So by going directly to them, maybe they're more likely to take advantage. Oh, totally. And, and after all, the projects who need our help the most are the projects that do not have assigned, specifically assigned administrative staff. Yeah. This is why I want maintainer circle to start so bad. Yeah. So speaking <laughs> of which, let's talk about maintainer circle. Um, a great segue. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did somebody say something? I had a lag. I apologize. There was like a weird lag. Okay, go. It's, I just want. I didn't want to make a. Um, I didn't want to cut anybody off. Um, so maintainer circle, um, I was bouncing some ideas around with Karen about the idea of overemphasizing that the first one is going to be a light session just to get everybody together and in the mode of getting together. Um, so thinking about uh, something called meals with maintainers um, so that it's lighter and people are okay with, you know, bringing a bite to eat or something like that. And then that also gives us kind of like the okay to book during, like for instance, 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Um, so folks understand that it's, uh, you know, a casual of nature thing. Uh, thinking of launching that uh, one of the first two weeks of September uh, and then KubeCon November uh, would have some kind of a much larger show. Um, and then idea after KubeCon November would be to have at least the cadence be once a month. Um, and then obviously uh, further cadence be dictated from the members. So that's where we are with Maintainer Circle right now. We already have at least three um, topics in the queue, uh, including inclusive language. Um, and I know uh, Steven's group, the working group for naming and Kubernetes has already kicked up. So in a couple of months, we'll actually have probably some guidance from that group as well for that meeting. Um, and that's really it. I have not made any progress on um, discussion around the online identity of the thing, um, meaning uh, maintainers.cncf.io, contributors.cncf.io. Um, I can't even remember where we left it off, honestly. Um, I think it was, let's do contributors. Um, contributors.cncf.io. Um, and then house the maintainer circle stuff under there. Does anybody remember where we left off with that one? Yeah, I don't even remember either. Time. What is time? I don't think we, we had any file agreement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would think it was file the service desk ticket. Yes. Service desk always has a way of just popping up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I need to follow service desk ticket. 
Um, Cause I think that would be, I think that would be a really good um, goal for us to have for launch for like a KubeCon November would be to launch like a contributors.cncf.io and then have like the project templates and the maintainer circle and um, you know, a link to the TOC maintainers public thing um, and you know, whatever else. Yada, 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 yada. You said yeah, November, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> OK, just making sure. Yeah, no, <laughs> not in two weeks. Yeah, I can, we, I can barely file an issue in two weeks. <laughs> <little bit>. like, <laughs> uh, also, it's not two weeks. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah it's in like two days. Very soon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, two um, days. I'm sorry, two days. I meant like the whole next two weeks is going to be like. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. So uh, uh, for the meals for maintainers or meals with maintainers, is that is that intended to be a one-time thing? No, I mean, I think that would be like the theme of the whole thing. Because I, I, like, I don't even have lunch scheduled on, on my calendar. And like, I don't want a meeting during the assumed lunch time that yeah. people normally I mean, have. What if yeah. it's like one o'clock then? <laughs> I don't even want to discuss when I have lunch. <laughs> like, what is lunch, not... really? It's optional. What is lunch? Wait, what is... Yeah. Say something else. Like you, you said twelve o'clock PT, and I immediately winced because, like, like it's so San Francisco Pacific centric. time zone centric yeah. that it's really off putting. Mm -hmm. Well, I did, that was a example that like, I'm gonna like do a doodle and like, we're gonna throw a doodle out and like get people's preferred times. That was a literal example. I, it also could be 6 p.m. PT for dinner for Pacific. It could be, and then late night meal for someone else. It could, that means it could be breakfast in their time zone. It could be lunch in their time zone. That's what I, I meant by being inclusive, by being inclusive of the fact that everybody's probably on the line eating some kind of meal. Like, because the problem is it's just gonna be another meeting if we don't necessarily have a theme to it. Like, it's just gonna be, oh, it's just a bunch of CNCF maintainers getting together and having another Zoom meeting. It, so that's it, why it, I'm just like thinking from the agenda item, it would be everybody get, everybody gets together, we do some kind of icebreaker, we chat, we get, you know, we, we do whatever. We either have a speaker or don't, but then at that point in time, we all do breakout rooms. So then we would use the Zoom feature to, to do breakout rooms and then have much smaller groups to do discussion topics. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about as far as like what, what the composition would look like of kind of like the first meeting. And then from like there, like, I would hope that the maintainers would kind of want us to shape it in the way that they want it. So I like everything but the meal thing. I, I think, like, let's see what time shake out and after we, we doodle it. But I like the structure overall. Just not the having to be on a call and eating. Okay, well then I can totally go back to maintainer circle. <laughs> <laughs> I have people excited to go, by the way. I was talking to the home maintainers and was pumping it up because they're having trouble promoting and finding more maintainers and contributors and people. And yeah. Talking about some of the troubles they've been having with like people camping and being jerks in their issue queue and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Let's talk about this at Maintainer Circle. Um, so we're, we, are, we have people excited to start. That's all I want to say. Yeah, I wanted to kick this up like a week ago, but everybody was like, no, KubeCon. And then I, <laughs> I was like, y'all, like, oh my God, it's just going to be like the longest launch of my life right now. <laughs> it's a six, month, six month launch because we've already had two cube cons and like, yeah, I'm just ready to launch this. Yeah. I'm ready to go. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to submit a service test ticket and talk about uh, building of mm. contributors.dncf.io and get started there um, and see what happens. But that's it. Um, that's all I got. Oh. I see that last one on our agenda, but it looks like we already talked about it. We did, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we've got that, we've got those plans. Um, I actually do have one question here, and I guess a question, for, what, what's the deadline for submitting CNCF SIG sessions for November? Not yet. Not yet, okay. September 13th. Yeah. Okay. September 13th, yeah. Um, <laughs> if, if I can just, since we're not having a governance meeting next week, if I could just oh pull God. April and Dawn um, here right now, does it make sense to submit one um, I was thinking of submitting one that would actually be a sort of short workshoppy thing on, you know, creating governance for your project. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. I'd be down for that. I submit to what? I, I missed that part. Um, for November, for KubeCon November, um, I, CNCF, SIGs, and working groups can oh. have... Yeah, contributor yeah. Sessions. Yeah, totally. And and I was thinking of doing one that was specifically a how to session about creating governance for your project. Yeah. No, that sounds good. No, my invite for my KubeCon Amsterdam invite came in and I was trying to look at that and make sure that I had it on my calendar. Yeah. And I got just I got distracted and stopped listening yep. just when you said my name. Yep. Okay. But okay. yeah, count me I mean in. we if we have until September 13th then we will have another governance meeting to work out details of that. So um it would be cool if we could have more curated sessions on the maintainer track about topics that maintainers want to hear. Um, like I've, I've been trying, I've been um, talking to the events folks about this for a couple of years now, where it's like, let's have a contributor summit, but the maintainer track. Um, so obviously still do deep dives and intros, but things like governance workshops and how to recruit contributors and burnout and um, for everyone, right? Not just necessarily like the Kubernetes maintainers that we, um, that we service that content for. Um, so I'm wondering if we should think about it like that too. That'd be great. Good. Let's see what, what How would the that work, Like, it would just be a mega maintainer track. Well, I'm just saying, like, if the process right now is that each, you know, project, whatever, gets one session, we'd have to sweet talk Amy into helping convince that we need more sessions. No. So I, uh, you know, I know a guy. I know. <laughs> so my, my, my thing about this is really like we are so limited on the sessions that we can offer for virtual anyways. So do the best you yeah. can with one. I love you all, but one. Well, and one thing well, also, Paris, is like, you know, that's still a, well, like, it's still a great idea. It doesn't have to happen within the KubeCon. We could easily use the CNCF, like, webinars and other stuff and do that same kind of stuff, especially since everything's virtual. These days, like, we don't have to be constricted by the if, week of yeah. well, if you want, If you want to do it in conference format, I have a platform available. Uh, That's cool. Well, I thought yeah. the deal was for us to have a maintainer circle during KubeCon, and because a ton of maintainers have requested it. And 
the reason that I heard that we shouldn't have one this time was because that would be seen as competing against KubeCon. So it w is it competing or not? Because if we do it like as a one-off in Boston, then I'll, I'll be seen as competing with KubeCon and not a part of KubeCon when the maintainers come to us and not to the main show. So is what's being suggested like the semi-equivalent of like a contributor summit type thing? Um, yeah, except it's not, yeah, except it's just on a maintainer track. Uh, and I'm just saying I want to, like, on that same maintainer track, it would be cool to have maintainer circles or a, a maintainer circle event. Um, I, would, I, would say an, uh, I would say a talk event, um, but given what I've heard about space, we're probably not going to swing multiple things. So, I mean, it's okay if we have maintainer content that's not at KubeCon, like y'all would be okay with that? <laughs> I mean, I would be okay with that. I don't know what you mean by... I mean, I literally would have st stood up the maintainer circle next week, literally. I asked about this a couple weeks ago. I said, hey, let me stand up the maintainer circle during the week of KubeCon so that we can ride KubeCon. And everybody was like, no, don't do that. That takes away from KubeCon. I mean, given that everything, I, uh, so I let's have mixed now, feelings, I'm given really, that. Now I'm confused as to. I think let's... if we want to do special maintainer content that we don't try to tie it into the week of KubeCon. I mean, it's yeah, just like, online <laughs> events are so exhausting as it is, like just more. I'm uh, exhausted thinking about multiple events happening in concert personally. And let's, we have like eight minutes, like let, we can, do you want to async it a little bit, Paris? I guess my point is when, when, when is it appropriate to have a maintainer circle? Because if I, if we can't have it during KubeCon, because all, I have been asked so many times from maintainers to have a contributor summit for CNCF during KubeCon. Like people are already there. They're already together. They want to well, hang out and talk but to But they're people. not. Oh, but this time they're not. Right. Right. So. Since and, it's virtual, I think that frees us up from that constraint. Like you could do it whenever. I yeah. guess I should have just There's learned no this week then. That's why I'm like, I don't know why. <laughs> why we waited <laughs> so so next week we've got, I, I don't yeah yeah so next week we've got kubecon and then between that and the next kubecon let's let's do it soon we i i mean we're going to but the second what? one was gonna i was planning it for it to be november at kubecon so that's so why i'm just like all right it's it's days and days of webinars. <laughs> Let's not add another meeting. I would kick it off hey. right at the beginning of September. I mean, everybody's on holiday right now because it's August. Um, I think that, and, and everybody's got KubeCon, and then we've got a week to recover from KubeCon. I, th I think early September, like once people are yeah. back after holidays. Can, do we have, can we pull together the content by then? Yes. I guess Paris is, okay. If, you know, um, if you want a platform, I believe um, uh, we've signed our blanket contract, this is we as in Red Hat, with Hopin2, and I have a budget for hosting community events. So um, that is available if... if Does that mean the Red Hat site. logo is everywhere? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. One of the <laughs> one of the complaint one of the complaints that the Red Hat marketing people had about Hopin Two is that our logo is not everywhere. So, I mean, I think if it's even in one spot, it would be inappropriate. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can look into that. Yeah. The. Um, I mean, I was just going to use Zoom and breakout rooms. If if you think that can work. If well, if you can do better, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're also on a CNCF call, so yeah. if there are resources to 
I just, I, I happen to, so I, I have frequent chats with Nancy who's who's in charge of of running kubecon all the things yeah <laughs> and and this is why i didn't even really necessarily consider asking cncf for info for this because um i happen to know what she's struggling with right now yeah. um the um so it turns out if the wait like a hot like two weeks we might have more bandwidth i yeah, yeah. yeah. so if you come like with an idea in two weeks perhaps like we might yeah. be able to actually like you know have conversations about that. Who knew? Yeah. So Stephen, I see. So maybe we ask. It. Right. Yeah. Maybe we. I mean, the thing is, we can also ask CNCF after KubeCon. The thing is, we can plan this. We can set a date. Right. We have the Hop in Two platform. You know that I can contribute. Um, so we know we can host it, even if CNCF does not have a way to host it. So and then we can wait and ask CNCF after KubeCon whether or not they have a way to host it. So let's file a service desk ticket about the request. And and then anything else that happens, whether it's before or after KubeCon, we'll, we'll take it from there. That's perfect. It's at least on our radar. And so we exactly. can start like, figuring out what details need to be, as well as timelines. Um, because one other thing that I'm kind of concerned about is as we get past like the uh, North America event, um, we're coming real close into the holidays. So, you know, stuff to think about, but super important for later. Yeah. Go team. Uh, I have a small housekeeping question to, to the seek. Uh, so I've noticed that the list of chairs uh, has not been updated. I assume that Gary has stepped down as an emeritus and Steven was nominated as a uh, chair, and I assumed it uh, was uploaded. Which list? Because I updated uh, in uh, in the readme of the uh, of the C contributor strategy. Oh, oh, cool. All right. How did we miss that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll get to it. I yeah, I guess I'll admit that what I did was I actually I fixed Steven's actual permissions. Um, rather than the documentation. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. That's can it do, for me. can do. Awesome. Thanks for that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Do we have anything else before in the three minutes before we close this out? Oh, I had one thing. Um, so I'm going to be doing KubeCon as well which means I'm not sure I have it in me to do the whole day and then also do the working group next week. So we should all be murdered. I hear yeah, you guys all are, those things. Yeah. You're also not doing the governance next week. So maybe I believe I have murdered everything. Yeah. Let me know if something is on the calendar and it should not be, but let me look okay. now. Like, so they're the all dead. Amy's feeling a little violent, apparently. No, 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 no not at all. <laughs> it's more about, like, I, 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 I want your, like, double booked to be your own fault, not, like, our fault for like the meetings that we would always have. <laughs> That's yeah. what I want. Yeah, it's just the whole murdered thing. I mean, just maybe there's some, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, all dead. It's, that. it's a cleanse. It's a good old calendar. Oh my God. Um, but no, more seriously, if you see a meeting on there for next week, it should not be there. I've gone okay, through. No, most it's of gone. The I see. I see okay. it's gone now. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Thank you for the ping. Um, I, I, I feel like I took care of this yesterday, but you know, there's always something. No, we're good. I blame caching. Sure. Yeah. That, uh, to be fair, calendaring is one of the hard problems still. So who knew? On it is. I hate it. Yeah. The. I right. I blame Microsoft, but but Google has a lot to answer for there too. Yeah, <laughs> VMware migrated our pivotal calendars. Uh, Google calendars to VMware calendars. And I literally, that was months ago. And I still spent 45 minutes today on a call with our executive assistant trying to sort out why I have phantom meetings on my calendars and not Do the real it? meetings. Do you love it? And it's, it's, it's the updated invitation with note, canceled, updated, removed. And you're like, what, what am I doing with the, like, am I going? Do I go? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I literally have like, phantom meetings me on my be. calendars that have been canceled ages ago, and still, it won't, they won't disappear off my calendar. Will not go away. 
just got a yep. blow up email. No more email. I did. Yeah, I just blew oh. up today. <laughs> yeah, we need. I, I sometimes feel like I need the Google Calendar. I murdered to... them, as Amy would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I sometimes feel like I need the Google Calendar equivalent of the Twitter thing, right? Where you delete and recreate your account in order to cancel all, all of your of follows the, and followers. Yeah. <laughs> right? I sometimes want to like delete my Google Calendar account. It's like, where's it. the soft block for all of my meetings? Yes. Yeah. Cause... Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with all of our murder notes, I think I think that's it. Yeah. But you're at time. Yeah. <laughs> On that note. Yeah. Okay. Helping. Later, y'all. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Have a Stay good safe. day. Bye.